Have you ever wondered how fossil fuels are formed? Where do they come from and why are they so important in our everyday lives? Fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas are everywhere, powering our cars, heating our homes, and even helping us cook. But have you ever stopped to think about how these fuels were made? Hi everyone, I'm Miss Michelle, and today we're embarking on an exciting journey through time to discover the formation of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources formed over many years from the remains of dead plants and animals. These ancient organisms sank to the bottom of oceans, swamps, and lakes, where they were buried under layers of mud and sediments. Over time, the heat and pressure from these layers transformed the organic material into coal, oil, and natural gas. These fuels are essential to our modern lives, but understanding their origins helps us appreciate their value and the need to use them wisely. So how did these dead plants and animals turn into fuels we use every day? Let's explore the process that made it possible. Step 1. Weathering Breaking down rocks and organic material, our story begins with weathering. Picture a massive rock formation, standing tall for many years. Over time, forces like wind, rain, and temperature changes begin to break these rocks into tiny particles like sand, silt, and clay. This is called weathering. But it is not just rocks. Dead plants and animals also play a role. When these organisms die, they start to decay, mixing with the small rock particles. This blend of organic material and sediments is the first step in forming fossil fuels and sedimentary rocks. So now let's imagine you're on a beach, holding a handful of wet sand. Mixed in are tiny bits of seaweed, shells, and small pieces of driftwood. This is similar to what happens during weathering. Rock particles mix with organic material, starting their journey to becoming fossil fuels. Step 2. Erosion Moving the sediments once weathering has broken down rocks and mixed organic material, the next step is erosion. Erosion is a process where natural forces like rivers, wind, or ice carry these particles away from their original location. Imagine a rushing river picking up sand, clay, and decaying plants, sweeping them along in the current. Erosion is crucial because it moves the sediments to new environments, such as riverbeds, lakes, or the ocean floor, where they will eventually settle. Without erosion, these particles would never find their way to the places where fossil fuels can form. Think about the last time you saw a river carrying leaves or sand downstream. Imagine the journey these sediments take, moving from mountains to valleys and finally settling in calm waters. This is erosion in action, transporting particles across the landscape. Step 3. Deposition. Sediments and organic material settle as sediments are carried along by water, wind, or ice. They eventually slow down and settle in a process called deposition. Deposition happens when the forces that move the particles lose energy, like when a river slows down as it enters a lake or when the wind stops blowing. This is where things get interesting. Layer upon layer of sediment mixed with decaying plants and animals begin to build up on the ocean floor, lake beds, or swamps. These layers stack on top of each other, gradually burying the organic material deeper. Picture yourself by a quiet pond. Throw a handful of mud into the water and watch it slowly settle at the bottom. This is deposition, sediments finding their final resting place, ready to be transformed into something new. Step 4. Compaction. Squeezing the layers over time. As more layers of sediment build up, the weight of the upper layers presses down on the layers below. This pressure compacts the sediments tightly together, squeezing out the water and air between the particles. This stage is called compaction. Compaction is essential because it makes the layers denser, pressing the sediments and organic material into a tighter space. The more compacted the layers become, the closer they are to transforming into fossil fuels. Now imagine stacking wet towels one on top of the other. As the stack gets taller, the towels at the bottom are squeezed tightly together. This is similar to compaction, where the weight of upper layers compresses the sediments below. Step 5. Cementation Gluing the sediments together after compaction, the sediments undergo a process called cementation. Cementation happens when minerals dissolved in water seep through the compacted layers, acting like glue to bind the particles together. This natural cement turns the loose sediments into solid rock. This stage is crucial for forming sedimentary rocks, which often contain the organic material that becomes fossil fuels. Cementation locks these organic materials within the rock layers, preserving them until they transform under the right conditions. Now that the sediments and organic material are buried and compacted, they undergo a transformation that takes many years. The pressure from the layers above, combined with heat from the Earth's interior, gradually changes the organic material into fossil fuels. Coal forms mainly from plant material buried in swamps and peat bogs, 
Over time, heat and pressure turn this plant matter into coal, which can be found in thick layers within sedimentary rock beds. Oil forms from tiny marine plants and animals buried under layers of mud and sand on the ocean floor. The heat and pressure turn these remains into liquid oil, which is trapped between layers of rock. Natural gas forms under similar conditions as oil, but requires even more heat and pressure, turning the organic material into a gaseous state, mostly methane. Natural gas is often found in pockets above oil deposits. Imagine these layers buried deep underground, gradually transforming over time. Coal, oil, and gas form, waiting to be discovered and used as energy sources. This incredible journey from ancient life to modern energy shows the power of natural processes. Fossil fuels are vital to our daily lives. Oil is refined into gasoline, powering vehicles like cars, buses, and planes. Natural gas is used for heating our homes, cooking meals, and generating electricity. Coal is burned in power plants to produce electricity, lighting up our cities, powering factories, and charging our devices. Now let's put your knowledge to the test. Imagine you're a scientist examining samples from different stages of fossil fuel formation. Sample A, a shiny black rock with visible plant material layered within. Guiding question, what role does heat and pressure play in transforming plant material into this rock? Think about how these conditions change the material. Sample B, a dark thick liquid found between sedimentary rock layers. Guiding question, how do tiny marine plants and animals turn into this liquid? Consider the effects of heat, pressure, and the conditions deep underground. Sample C. A colorless, odorless gas trapped above an oil deposit. Guiding question. Why is natural gas often found above oil? Reflect on the conditions required to form this gas and why it's positioned this way. Sample D. Layers of sediment with visible organic material mixed within. Guiding question. How do the process of compaction and cementation prepare these layers for fossil fuel formation? Sample E. Fossil fuels are considered non-renewable. Which alternative energy source is renewable and does not deplete Earth's resources? A. Wind. B. Coal. C. Natural gas. D. Oil. Guiding question. Reflect on energy sources that are abundant and do not rely on the Earth's finite resources. Sample F. Fossil fuels release energy when burned. Which of the following is the key environmental concern related to fossil fuel use? A. Increasing biodiversity. B. Reducing greenhouse gases. C. Contributing to global warming. D. Improving soil fertility. Guiding question. Consider the environmental impacts of burning fossil fuels and their role in climate change. Sample G. Which of the following best describes why fossil fuels are considered non-renewable resources? A. They can be easily replaced within a human lifetime. B. They are produced faster than they are used. C. They take many years to form and are used faster than they are replenished. D. They are abundant and found everywhere on Earth. Guiding question. Think about how long it takes for fossil fuels to form compared to how quickly we consume them. Why can't we replace them easily once they are used? Quick quiz recap. Which sequence best describes the formation of fossil fuels? A. Weathering, erosion, deposition, compaction, cementation, heat and pressure. B. Melting, cooling, solidification. C. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation. D. Uplifting, folding, cracking. Guiding question. Think about the processes we discussed. Which sequence aligns with the journey from the sediments and organic materials to fossil fuels? Today, we explored the step-by-step -step process that led to the formation of sedimentary rocks and fossil fuels, weathering, erosion, deposition, compaction, and cementation. We learned that over many years, these natural forces transform ancient plants and animals into valuable resources like coal, oil, and natural gas. Let's review what we've learned. Fossil fuels are formed from the remains of dead plants and animals that were buried under layers of sediment. Through the powerful forces of heat and pressure, these buried materials are transformed into the fossil fuels we rely on today. These fuels power our vehicles, generate electricity, and heat our homes. However, because fossil fuels take many years to form, they are non-renewable, meaning once we use them up, they cannot be quickly replaced. So now, how can you think of three ways you use fossil fuels in your everyday life? Think about activities like driving, cooking, or using electricity at home. How would your daily routine change without fossil fuels? 
Consider how dependent we are on these resources and what life might look like with alternative energy sources. What are some ways we can reduce our dependence on fossil fuels? Reflect on how energy saving practices and using renewable resources like solar, wind, and hydroelectric power can help conserve fossil fuels. So here are some final thoughts. Understanding how fossil fuels are formed helped us appreciate their value and recognize the importance of using them wisely. By learning about the natural processes that create these fuels, we can better understand the need for conservation and the benefits of exploring renewable energy alternatives. Next time you turn on the light, cook a meal, or ride in a car, remember the incredible journey that fossil fuels took to reach us. Starting as ancient life forms buried and transformed over time, consider how we can better protect these resources for future generations by being mindful of our energy use and exploring cleaner, more sustainable options. Keep exploring, stay curious, and continue to look at the world around you through the eyes of a scientist. Every rock, every drop of oil, and every puff of natural gas has a story to tell. A story that begins deep in the past and impacts our present and future. Until next time, thank you for joining me on this journey through Earth's natural wonders. Keep up the great work, Earth Science Explorers, and I'll see you in the next episode of 3D Questions from Steam Spirations.